this is Abina at Cross Keys Crafts. Today I'm working uh, with my Lavinia stamps again. This is a bit inspired by two projects I did recently. I've just realised I forgot to take my plaster off my finger, so don't worry about that. Um, a bit inspired by this here. Um, if you haven't seen this, I'm going to link to the video below. I created that a few months ago. And I'm using a similar theme today because I like the idea of having the moon with the hairs. But today I decided to use this jumping hair. Um, this was also a little bit inspired by a ring I saw advertised on Facebook recently. Um, and this had the theme of a jumping hair and a moon and this sort of inspired me to go back to this theme and the other thing which is a bit has got to do with the technique I'm going to use today has got to do with this project because when I created the stars here I was thinking about doing some ink resist technique and going over this with darker ink and eventually I decided against that but I thought I should stick with that and do that on tonight's project. So I've got a few stamps ready here. As I said, I'm, I'll be using that hair. I don't think I will use any others. I will just have that one as a main focus. I've got my moon stamp here. I've also got my moon mask. Oh, there it is. And I've taken the advice on from Joe Rice to put something on here. She just uses Posca pen. I just put this little sticker on here so it's easier to find on the desk. And I've also got um, these trees here. I think it's called group trees or something like that, or tree group. Um, I can't remember, but I'm going to link to that below anyway. And my idea is to have the moon fairly central, so to give it enough space for the hair and the stars at the top. I might have to zoom out a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I shall be doing that. So the first thing I have to do if I want these stars to resist the ink is to stamp them and then to heat emboss in clear over them. And that's what I'm going to do. So I've got a few uh, little stamps here. These are all the pound stamps or mini stamps. So they're different stars. Um, yeah, there's these. These are more just like specks. I think I will just use um, a variety of these um, rather than just sticking to one kind. I do actually prefer these ones that are very similar rather than the having the big ones in between. But I might change my mind in a few minutes. So I'm just getting my ink ready and my um, acrylic blocks for these. And also I need my... Um, anti-static powder tool because I want to heat emboss over this. Okay, so my idea was to stamp these stars and heat emboss these uh, with clear embossing powder and I just used my Livinia Element Sundance. What I did not realise is that these dry so quickly that once I finished stamping these would not hold any embossing powder. So I thought I have to get creative. I would like these stars to be um, yellow. Um, so my idea is if I uh, ink blend over this first and then obviously it'll dry, hopefully dry as quickly as the stars did when I stamped them. Then I can stamp the stars again with a Versamark and heat emboss them in clear. And then hopefully I can blend over the yellow and make that disappear. So that's what I shall be doing. So I will just ink up my brush and go over this. Hopefully get it as saturated as I did with the stamping. I have to be a bit careful. My ink pad is a bit damaged. The sponge is deteriorating. So I will treat myself to a new stamp pad with my next order. So I've actually got a bit of a residue there from the sponge. I will brush that off before I do anything else. 
coverage is not as dark as it is with a stamping. I could um, apply a bit more pressure, but I think that's okay for me, especially if I want to go in with the heat embossing with it gold or silver afterwards. Um, it'll be a higher contrast there and it won't clash too much with a too yellow um, background. So I think this will be fine for me. I just leave it at that. So now I need to leave that to dry just for a moment and I will test off camera um, with my embossing powder, I will just pour it over and then I can see if it's actually dry enough to work on. If it isn't, the powder will stick. If it is dry enough, the powder will come off and I can easily brush it off with a with a um, paintbrush. So I shall do that quickly off camera. So I've heat set this a little bit where it wasn't dry yet with my heat tool just on the first setting making sure it didn't get too hot and I'm using my anti-static powder tool on the area there and now I can stamp my stars I'm not even paying too much attention where I'm going um, I might have a two-tone yellow then if I get onto the areas where I've already stamped, but I'm not too bothered about that. At least this time with the Versamark, I know it'll stay sticky. And the only problem is now, I might not be able to see where I've already stamped. Maybe I just stick to the areas where I have stamped the same stars before. Don't really want to do any double stamping so I'd rather add a few more stars later with the other heat embossing. See I can't even see now where I've already got it even against the light. What I could do is heat set these first and then come in again I might just do that. So if I apply my or even just apply my embossing powder because that will show So I'm using the clear embossing powder. Obviously, if you wanted white stars, you could just heat emboss in white. But see, I can see now where I've got the embossing powder, so that's good. So I can come in with the other stamp. Just making sure I don't touch the powder. I will actually thinking I'd check and um, change to this smaller um, acrylic block less likely to then put my fingers or the block into the other areas I don't want it to look too much like a pizza as Joe Rice would say so I'd rather, as I said, rather keep it a bit simple and add some more later. Yeah, I think that's fine. So I'm going to heat set this off camera now. So I'm going to heat up my heat tool for about 30 seconds and then I uh, go over this and heat set all the clearing. I might, once I've done that, add one more um, on the top there. I'll have a look or if I go in with this one because this one has got a slightly different shape that might actually work nicely in between these whereas these are sort of a round shape. So I think I might just do that off camera. So I've heat set mine, um, it did spray a little bit here so I will have little specks rather than defined stars here in that area but as I said, I'm not too fussed because I'll come in anyway with a second lot of stars afterwards. Um, I'm now doing the 
main stamping so I'm arranging my uh, stamps here starting with a moon I never know which way up it is it also always looks well, maybe I've got this the wrong way around here on the packaging so, so I want him there and I want the hair to be somewhere here Yeah, because I don't want it too close to the stars because I want him to be in a sort of mid-air colour. And then I will just have some trees there at the, oh sorry, trees, trees there at the bottom. So I might have, I'll do this afterwards, actually, after I've stamped these two. So I've just bought the Versafine Claire Twilight. I've seen this used a few times on the Lavinia Stamps uh, YouTube channel. Um, they say it's a nice alternative to the actual very black um, Versafine Onyx Black. So I give that a try. Just moving my magnets a little bit, making sure this doesn't get pulled off. So I'm just inking this up here off on the side. Make sure you have got enough ink on these stamps. My hair has, as it always has, got some fluff on it. So I'm just using here my silicon tool rather than my fingers. So I'm inking it up again. This is lovely, lovely ink pad. I like the rest of fine. So I'm just pressing this down and give that enough time to sink into the cardstock. I, by the way, I'm just using a smooth 300 GSM cardstock. I think the company's called UK Crafts. Um, I can link to that below if I remember. I use that for all sorts. I use that for card bases as well. Yeah, this is where the hair is not f fully stamped because I had a bit of fluff there. But I'm happy with the moon there. I will go over that anyway in a moment. So a little trick I showed the other day. If you've got some gaps in there, you can just pick up some of your ink just with an ordinary brush. Just take the ink up and then just go in again and this will blend in really nicely and you can have this a bit more solid than it shows there. I'm actually dabbing a little bit more here than drawing it and that'll be fine. So I'm leaving that to dry for a moment and I mentioned that before my New Year's resolution is I'm going to clean these stamps straight away and put them away rather than me leaving these for days and days and days. To stamp the trees, I have decided to put my trees on an acrylic block because I do want some second generation stamping. I want to uh, change the levels of these so I just thought it might be easier. So I put a bit of scrap paper underneath so I don't stain my... Um, um, stamping platform but obviously you don't need to have it in the stamping platform it's just convenient for me now so I'm using the twilight again I'm inking it up completely although I'm quite positive that I don't need the whole lot let me just put it on this side because it does want to stick a bit so I hope I'm not getting in the way there yeah my acrylic block is quite wide and I will hit this now, so I do need to move that a little bit. So as before, I'm leaving that a little bit to sit there. And now, doing the second generation. Ah, this is what I meant. It's hitting the 
thing here. Should have put it on the edge or taken a smaller one. Sometimes I know these things happen, but I don't take them seriously. So I'm just inking this up again. And I'm going much lower now. And then go a bit higher with the second generation. And oh, one thing I forgot. If you have stamped it off like this and then you do a second generation, I haven't stamped this properly off because the card is quite thick. So I've actually got a two tone there, but it doesn't matter because I will um, ink blend over this anyway later. But if you have a look at my stamp now, where I haven't stamped off yet, it's, it's still got the original colour, then this is a bit I have stamped off twice. And that's this area where I've stamped off once. So if I did a third generation with this one, it would still be first generation, second generation and third generation. So that wouldn't work. So if you want to make sure that you're doing a proper second generation stamping, do it on your scrap paper on the side, which I will do now. So I'm just inking it up thoroughly here and then stamping it off completely. So I'm going off camera there. So I know that if I do this now, it's definitely second generation all over. So I'm just thinking whether I want to go in a little bit higher there. So I'm just inking up the whole stamp again, stamping it off again. And then coming here. Yeah, I think that's enough for me. Don't want to overdo it because the main focus should be up here. So I can take this out of my stamping platform. I will keep the scrap paper for when I do the ink blending around it. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm working on this silicon mat, it's just because I have it. It came with my um, shrink plastic set. But I don't find it very practical. It does bulge when I do my shrink plastic. It doesn't really help me to keep my shrink plastic flat. So I thought I might just as well use it for my ink blending and stamping. So now I want to um, colour in the moon, ink blend over that a little bit. I think I just do that with my lost shadow. And I want to introduce some blue colours. I've got here at the moment the Della Blue, the Blue Lagoon and also the dark denim. I have this one here because I wanted to use that for my 2024 card and decided against it. But I think with this scene, it would work really, really nicely. I'm just thinking whether I need to have a different color as well. I thought about working with a purple again, as I did in the apparition card, but maybe I just keep it a different color scheme with this. So, I'm just getting my ink blending brushes ready and then I'll show you what we do. So I'm using my last shadow because I find this moon really, really dark. Um, I like the contrast of the dark blue, but I think it could do with um, taming it a little bit. I could put my moon mask around it, but I think I'm just going on to this here. And I'm just taking the edge of this a little bit. Um, so we've got some fluffy on my brush. I think it was just one of the bristles. So it does move the ink around a little bit as well, which is quite nice because we've got a bit of a blue shade to this as well. But I tell you what, I will get my mask quickly. So I've got... Um, no, I might actually not need it. I'm just, I just thought I could need it. But as I'm going round it... With a darker colour anyway, it doesn't matter if I go a little bit over the edges. Yeah, don't know if the camera picks it up, but it's much more muted now and I like it that way. So before I introduce any dark colours, I think just to highlight the hair a little bit, I will actually come in with a slightly lighter blue, which is the polar blue here. 
it could just do with just a bit of highlighting there. So I'm just testing on the side here. Yeah, this is a sort of a, like a baby blue. This will just be fine. And I don't mind going over it because it's not an oxide. It should actually not take away from the um, twilight. I just had to check what the colour was called. So if you haven't seen me craft before, this is what I do. I've got a vision, but I haven't planned this through completely. So I just invite you to just come along on my creative journey and hopefully pick up a few tips on the way. So I'm just spreading this out now. And I think I will go down to the edge of the moon, although I do want to create some halo around the moon as well, I think. Ooh, smudge. Because I applied it a bit too heavily there. I should have taken it off on the side, but never mind. So I'm now coming in with the Blue Lagoon. Because that is a slightly darker blue. And again, I'm testing it on the side. So, and I basically want to blend that in into the lighter areas here. only actually it's only just a hint darker than the uh, polar blue so you can't see a lot of difference just a little bit so then I think I come in with a Della blue which is a little bit darker I'm using, by the way, I'm using the same ink blending brush for this one. I've just labelled it medium blue. That will be just fine for me. Putting a bit in the lid here as well. Making sure. I'm now doing a light application and I want to get some sort of circular movement now and working my way into the tree area as well. I'm not an expert ink blender. There are definitely many more crafters out there who are better, but I enjoy it. And um, see, I've just created a streak there. But there are always ways of, you know, working with these sort of mistakes you make. You know, I could sort of think like it's intentional. It's like a sort of lunar wind I'm creating. So I'm just going along with this. I could actually, if I thought about it, if I went in with my stencil brushes, um, where is it? Like this, I would get more of a streaky look. So I might just add that afterwards. So I'm still trying to keep some sort of halo, although it's not very even at the moment. Well, that's fine. So, and now I want to come in with a dark denim. And with a dark denim, I want to go the, around the area here, but I will definitely want to go up there as well. I might come in with a Della Blue again, in some of these areas I might actually do that but with this one I definitely want a heavy application on the top 
just to have the contrast with the yellow there. And for this one, I'm using the dark blue blending brush for myself. This one's slightly bigger. It's not as smooth as these here. Um, I bought these at a different time. I think these are the first ones I bought, but they're not bad. So, starting at the bottom there. With this one, I definitely need to layer this as in apply it and go over it again to get the saturation I want. I think we'll try and go in with my stencil brush here, see if that gets a heavier application. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely better. I hope you can see how dark I'm going there at the bottom. So I changed back to the ink blending brush because the bristles here, they were getting a bit too hard. I probably have got a bit of residue there from another project. So I need to wash this thoroughly first, I think. So, but I'm so far, I'm happy with this. Uh, don't be alarmed about the look of this because we will wipe the ink off the um, embossed bits afterwards. What I'm not happy about is with uh, what I'm happy about is this rubbish stamping here so i think i will go in with my black soot and make the bottom even darker and i think i will add a hint of purple i've got the villainous potion here and i will definitely go in with a darker blue here which will be the duller blue so i will again speed that up in my video and uh, yeah so because you don't have to see this all in real time
so I don't know if you can hear me sigh on this speed sped up bit I'm not happy with the moon mask is a bit too big and I'm actually not happy with the way that it's too crisp around here now I thought it would leave a halo but it's too much of a halo so I have to find a way of blending that out a little bit I'll probably come in with my little um, stencil brush and just um, I don't know try to blend that in a little bit more you can still see the bottom there but I hope that later if I come in with a few highlights that I can sort of disguise that a little bit and the top at first I thought looks a bit too bright but then sometimes when you look at the sky it's actually not as dark because you've got reflections from the moon from the other stars so I think this will be actually be fine let me just take this away now so I'm just getting a little bit of uh, tissue and I'm going to wipe away the ink on the embossed areas so when I said tissue I actually use toilet paper so I can wipe the ink off the stars now and you can see that immediately I'm much brighter oh there's actually a bit of tissue came off there as well but yeah so far I'm pleased with this so now I need to um, sort this out here and then um, once this has dried but I might actually do that in the morning because it is half 12 now half, half an hour after midnight so um, I'll probably do the ink embossing there, not ink embossing, um, yeah, heat embossing there in the morning. But I will definitely sort this out now. So I'm just getting one of my smaller stencil brushes here. This one's got some residue, bear with me. So I found a smaller one. I'm just going into my within this potion again I'm just testing it on the side here on my scrap paper and then hopefully I can blend this out a little bit it's not what I had in mind originally I'm actually going into the area there as well where they actually there's the moon could have cut a moon shape I might, what I might do is um, make myself a mask, cut it out and then go in with a little bit of water, just spritz a little bit or something like that, just to take away from these harsh lines here now. Um, I'll have a quick think and then I'll be back. Okay, I've done what I should have done in the first place. I just stamped my moon off very lightly and then cut this out. So this will actually cover the moon nicely. But in the areas now where I've already gone in too far with a purple, I'm just using my Lost Shadow again in the stencil brush. And I'm just going over that again to smooth this out a bit. And I've got some residue here. Oh my God, I'm just ruining this. Never mind. The important thing is when you do things like that, I thought this was a clean brush, but it actually got some yellow residue that now got loosened. Just go with the flow. Just pretend it's meant to be. And we're meant to have a little bit of yellow on the bottom there. So I'm just blending this out like this. I always leave, if you're wondering, I'm always leaving these things in because they do happen when we craft. And we do things that we know we shouldn't do. So never mind. What I could do if I wanted to is go in with a bit of my white. I've got a cloud white. So I might actually just leave it in. Because the moon is not two-tone. The moon has got different colours. So I might just as well go in a little bit here. Do a few speckles maybe. And it looks like it's meant to be. Can you see? So. so now I want to go around a little bit with the lost shadow as well. 
create the halo I had intended originally. And then I think I'll come in with the purple again, or as I said, with the spritz I had planned. I might just do that. Um, I'll have a little, a little thing before I ruin this completely now. Okay, I've decided within five seconds I will go around with the purple and then I'll come in with my water bottle. So. Just want this now to be a bit more saturated around here. So if I'm casting a shadow on this. not doing an awful lot to take away from that area there so I might just leave it like this oh no I'm keeping my mask on I don't want anything to happen to the moon now so I'm just spritzing I will go in top as well a little bit just leaving this to sit Tempted to do more, but I think this might be just enough. Take this away now. So I hope the camera picks up what's happening. You see, we've got these lovely, lovely sprinkles. So I think what I could do eventually is come in with some. Um, stickles or something some glitter but i don't want to overdo it although i'm tempted to come in with a bit of water on a brush um again i'll have a little break and i'll have a little think okay so i've got a bit of water here on a little saucer and i just want to sort of blend out that extra circle i have here so i am just touching that very lightly I'm trying to move the ink around there. Just to soften that edge there. I'm coming away a little bit, trying to make some brush strokes. So it looks a bit as I said, like a like a halo, looks intentional. Happy on with this on this side, but this could do with the blending a bit more. Luckily with this cardstock it can hold the water, so it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm happy with it now. It's a bit of a splotchy at the bottom that can do with blending out a bit more. A bit too much ink there. But I hope the camera picks it up how that has taken away now from this sort of double line. Yeah. I always find the moon now almost too strong but um we'll see i might do something different with it afterwards but i need a bit more give it in with a bit of water and just maybe move the lost shadow about a bit take that off oh yeah so i shall call it a night and leave this to dry and then come in with my well i thought some heat embossing in uh, metallic embossing with my metallic embossing powder maybe even some foiling um i saw heidi the yorkshire crafter do some foiling this week um i just got myself the same 
glue she uses, although I afterwards realised I had something similar. I'll have a think and I will definitely come in with some white pens for the hair. But yeah, as I said, I'll call it a night now and I'll be back in a sec for you. So it is the next morning and I have picked a stencil I would like to use. But with this stencil, I don't like the look if any of these swirls are cut off. So at first I thought I'm going to mask them with washi tape, but it was very complicated because of the rounds. So I had the idea to just do a light, uh, st light stenciling on a piece of paper and then I could easily cut the swirls away. For that, I just put this against the light with the image. I quickly outlined the moon where the hair is and the sky, so I knew which bits to cut away. So the ones that I've cut away will be the areas where I will have the stenciling, and these are the areas that will get protected and where I won't have the stencil. So the important thing now is that I line this template or this mask back up with the original stencil. So I just have to remind myself I had it earlier. Yeah, I can see this through here now. And I also need to check that I've got no areas of the paper peeping through here and cutting off any swirls. Or if they do, this one looks like there is a bit too much. Although it yeah, so I can always cover these a little bit with washi tape after I've stuck this down. So the easiest thing to do is just to put some washi tape or removable adhesive on the back here. And then when I've lined this up, I can just stick it down. So that will definitely stay in place. Oh, where are we? That looks fine to me. That is a little spot. Yeah, I need to cover that. So I'm just pressing this down here. The stencil. So there are a few spots where I need to cover just a little bit, just there and there. And then obviously I also need to realign it on here, making sure it's covered where I want it to be. But I quickly do this off camera. I have aligned the stencil here now. The idea is to just have one swirl coming in here or two swirls onto the moon and then two coming off. The rest will be covered and I've got most of the uh, area down here covered. I have or will use for that the Sizzix 3D adhesive. I saw Heidi the Yorkshire crafter use that so I ordered it not realising that I actually have this one that probably would have done the same job which is the Decofoil Transfer Gel Duel. So either of them will be fine but because this one's new I think I'm going to use this one here. So I've got a spatula here on the side. I've only ever done this once, stenciling with some paste. So I'm not even sure how much I need. I think I just use a bit less to start with. I only I don't want really don't really want a thick layer. I just want enough for it to hold the um, foil I'm going to use over this. So. See, I've already lifted that. Uh, it's a quite a tricky stencil because it's got different directions. The important thing is to get a smooth application, not to have any sort of ridges on there because they are likely to show. Might be better to put on a little bit more and just scrape it off. Then I don't know if there's a 
risk of getting the glue underneath. See, I'm not doing a good job of not creating any ridges. Can you see what I mean? The sort of stripes there. Always looks easier when other people do it. I'm not even sure whether this is a back, best spatula. I just got these from the works. I think they were a pound when I bought them. I think I'll leave it at that. Also, you can put your paste back in, but make sure you haven't picked up any ink. I have a little bit of ink there, so I'm just putting it on the edge. And I'm now going to take the stencil off, and I'm going to wash that straight away with water, and will also clean my um, spatula. So I'm just very carefully peeling this off. Tell you what, I peel it off from the top so I can keep my finger on the project because there's no glue on there. But be mindful of any glue you probably have on your fingers. Yeah, it looks okay to me. Um, that off as well so now I need to leave that to dry to get tacky so I'll be back in a while but obviously for you it's just a few seconds the adhesive has dried for about half an hour now and you can see that it's dried when it's clear and it is tacky I took about 10 minutes to decide what I wanted to use whether I wanted to use foil or gilding flakes both are possible um, with this here and I also had to decide whether I wanted to use silver foil or gold in the end I decided on the gold because I thought it would go more nicely with the stars on the top so what I need to do is cut a piece that's big enough to cover the area so just measuring it below here I don't mind being a bit more wasteful. I used to be really tired with my foil and then I stopped using it anyway. So I might just as well use it up. So, and then I'm, sorry, I'm just moving this up a little bit. Just placing this over here and you can just use your fingers if you wanted to, but I'm just getting my brayer out. And I'm just using the pressure of the brayer to adhere this all. You could also put it through the die cutting machine but I'm always a bit conscious that I might have then imprints from my die cutting plates. So giving it some extra movement, so with some extra pressure and a different movement all around and then you can see the pattern through this so you know it's adhered. Make sure I'm going through the to the edge. And when it's fully adhered, it should come off really, really easily. So you've got some areas that at the top that need more pressure.
Yeah, it's a bit streaky there, as if the either the adhesive has dried too much, or I can always fold it back and see if I, it grabs it. But yeah, it's a bit, a little bit better. So go back where you've missed it, apply a bit more pressure, and then hopefully you get a better result. I said it comes off really easily when it has grabbed everywhere it's just exposed glue that will make it stick down so I can always take a fresh piece if I've got areas like this here and just press that down yeah that works. So I will tidy this up off camera quickly and then I decided to do some heat embossing on the top. I'm very happy with the results. I've got the few streaks that I mentioned earlier where the paste wasn't very even and I found that was the reason why I was struggling with the brayer. So it was better for me to just apply pressure with my fingers but I think this is really lovely and it's got this sort of even this sort of red iridescent color I really like this so as I said I would like now like to do some more heat embossing on the top I would like to take the one star stamp stamp that I haven't used yet for these and just fill in a bit of the gaps I am conscious that when I apply the heat tool that maybe the clear embossing powder will melt a little bit but it should not take away from the uh, colour because that is sealed underneath so I hope that will be okay. I wasn't quite sure what gold to use. I've got a gold but it's like a matte on like a dark gold so I thought I'm going to use a mix of the enchanted gold and the tinsel and if I say mix I think I will just pick these up with my finger and just sprinkle them on. Hopefully that gives a nice effect. I might, it might go totally wrong, but I do like to experiment. As always, I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool. I definitely know that the ink is dry because that's why I did it last night. So I've got my Versa mark here, just inking this up and as I said I want to go into some areas where I haven't stamped yet and hopefully I remember where I've done it. I'm trying to be mindful and just go bit by bit. Because if I go from one side to the other, I might not remember where I've already stamped. I'm trying to get the bigger star definitely in the areas where I haven't stamped yet. And then the smaller ones can overlap. Because this will obviously be like a layer that's more in the front. Whereas the stars underneath will then fade a little bit into the background. That's the idea anyway. And you can see I'm rotating the stamp as well, so not to make it too obvious that it is the same one. Just thinking whether I can hold it against the light. Don't know if I need another one there, but I think I'll just leave it at this. My idea was just to use my fingers and just to sprinkle this on like this. I 
just need to make sure that I've got enough embossing, embossing powder everywhere. And the excess will definitely go in the bin. Yeah, this needs more. Also, I've got quite a bit of excess. Although I like, I like the bit of excess, it might blow away anyway. So, the thing with, the, with these is they, they're not very good for outlining. So, we've got fine details. I think there's just too much sparkle in these. I might come in with my plain gold after all. Yeah, if I hold these against the light, it's not very precise. So, let me just get my normal gold out as well. This is definitely finer than the other two. Yeah, that definitely shows me more of the stars. Obviously where the other embossing powders are already set, this won't stick. But it might just pick up some of the details. Yeah, I think this could look quite nice. I try, as before, I try to heat set it from the back. But again, it because it's thick cardstock, it might not work. But I'll just give it a try. So I come back after I've done that. Yeah, I think this looks really cool. So basically I've got the gold, but I've got the sparkle glitter in these as well. I added one more group here that I wasn't happy with. And I've got a bit of a star here that just didn't take all the embossing powder, although I went over this again. And I can easily remedy this with my emb well, embossing pen or you can use a sticky glue pen. And I'm just going over that and I'm just going to apply some more embossing powder over that. And I'm going to heat set that again quickly off camera. All that's left for me to do now to finish this is off is come in with my uh, pastel white pastel pen and just give the hair some highlights of the um, well where the moon hits the hair so all at the bottom there bottom of the ears maybe even the tail a little bit just soften that a little bit by wiping it let me just zoom in for you you can see what I'm doing I'm also tempted to do something with the moon. I still find it a bit too flat, so I might just add a few speckles here. Give it a bit of texture and make it look a bit more natural. Maybe even put a bit of highlights on there. Oh, sorry, you can't see what I'm doing at the bottom there. Sorry, just did the same as on the top there. Yeah, I think that's all I need. Sometimes with crafting, it's knowing where to stop. So let me just lift my camera so you can see the whole picture. But yeah, I'm really happy with this now. I might just cut it down just a little bit because the sides are a bit sticky. I had a bit of residue of the... Um, paste there also if you find this is sticky go over it with your anti-static powder tool that will take any stickiness off and yeah i think this is really nice and quite close to what i have envisioned so oops my camera stopped recording because i was running out of storage space i hope this doesn't mean that the video will be too long so i just wanted to show you the finished card i hope it recorded how I put the pastel on there and yeah I'm really pleased with this 
Well, I think this is very close to the vision I had of it. Uh, I made a few boo-boos on the way, but I think I rescued it well and I'm really pleased with the result. If you like this too, you might want to give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating, I usually post videos on a Wednesday and a Sunday, but not always with Lavinia stamps. You might want to subscribe to my channel. I'd be very happy about that. And I'll see you soon with another video.